Hi, my name's Des Ship, and you join me today at the famous Woodlands View Fishery in Droitwich, and I'm going to run you through some nice little tips on how to fish expanders, but most importantly, how to prepare the perfect expander to fish with. Getting the perfect expander is really, really important when you're fishing expanders on the pole or whether you're fishing it on a method or on the bomb. Now, the way I do it is really, really easy. I get my pro expanders like that. They come in a bag, four sixes, and I've got the new eights, which is what I'm going to be fishing with today. Now, I'm going to show you how easy this is. I've got a bucket of water. Obviously, that's too big. And all you do, whether you do it on, I like doing mine the night before, and one of the most important things is make sure you use freezing cold water. I find if you use cold water, the better the pellets. And I just basically put as many pellets as you want in a container and they sink like that. And then you can do them on the morning before you leave to go fishing, but give them around about two hours. So that just shows you, you know, put them in a the water and they sink. Now I normally do mine in little containers like that. So I've got a little container with a lid on. So I put sort of that many pellets in. Obviously, the more pellets you want, you might want to use a bigger container or even a smaller container like i got there. Little containers like that are easy. Just make sure they're airtight. Fill the container right up with water after you've put your pellets in. Leave them in a cold place like a fridge or on the garage floor, and they're perfect. And I like to do mine the night before. I've got my 8 mils there. I'm looking to fish with 8 mils today. That's the new 8 mils in there. They're absolutely fantastic pellet. Um, which I'm looking, obviously looking to catch bigger carp on the pole and on the bomb. I'm going to turn around now and show you what these pellets are all about. My bait tray is nice and simple for this session. I've got some 6mm hard pellets there. And I've got my expanders. I've got my 8mm expanders there. As you can see from that, I've actually got a couple of different coloured expanders there, the 8mm and a few 6s. And I'll show you them later in the film how I do them because they're absolutely brilliant. Like any hook, you know, like any change hook bait, whether you're fishing a method feeder with bandoms, different coloured hook baits make a big difference. But I will show you them a little bit later in the film. Now what I'm going to do, I'm actually going to start on a little bomb, chucking it to the far bank, and then fish the pole a bit later. So I want to prime my pole up and hopefully get some bigger fish in for later in the session. So I'm just going to pot in some six mils. I've only got six mils out because I'm looking to catch quality fish. It's nice and warm. I'm not going to put loads in because I'm going to be obviously throwing a few over the top as well. So I've only set out to fish a top kit plus two. Because if I'm going to catch a lot of fish and a lot of quality fish, I think it's going to be short. So I've got myself lined up with a little reed on the far bank. Probably only like 25 pellets, not a lot because they're quite big. And the beauty about the Pro Expanders is actually put them on a bomb. Now I've got a little nine foot Tyson, I'm only chucking probably 20 meters, just over 20 meters, absolutely perfect for that. I've got a little 20 gram ICS inline bomb, eight pound main line. I've got a hook length there of 019 power line, straight off the mag store system. So it's nice and simple, and it's got a rapid stop on the end. It doesn't get any easier. Got a little baiting needle there, so that goes into the rapid stop like that. And I'm going to start on a natural colour 8mm Pro Expander. Like I said, these are new. You know, you know, we all know some days they will pick up a soft hook bait rather than a hard hook bait. So there you go. That's a 14 kkm hook. A little bomb, some fish topping, so it looks like it could be good. I got myself clipped up as well, just off that reed bed. Like that, so straight down. Now watch your rock, because the fish in this distance, I think we're going to get some proper aggressive bites. I'm just going to fire a few hard sixes over the top. And the plan of action really is to start on sixes, and then later in the session, like you would, hopefully the bigger fish will come, you know, and I can start feeding those eight mils. And they're so good, I can actually feed them. And I can actually put them on the hook and feed them. Let's take a little bit, a little bit of tension in the tip, not too much. I don't want to keep firing all the time because I want to try and get the fish in the peg, 
but get them to stay down. It's warming up a bit now. The probably water temperature is like 14, 15 degrees. The fish are going to start looking for some bait. But it's a great way of fishing. And like with those 8 mil Pro Expanders now, you know, if you go to a venue and you're fishing with 8 mils and 6 mils on a bomb, and it's the same on the pole, some, some venues I go, you can't beat an expander. They're on, they go a bit funny, they won't pick a hard pellet up, that's when your expanders are massive. And I've got my red ones there, I mean red's a fantastic colour, you know, whenever you're fishing with red meat. Look at them beauties. It makes a big difference sometimes having a different colour just for the hook. Let's just fire a few more sixes over the top. Try not to get them too, too near that reed bed. Just trying to drop them a little bit shorter. And even if you're bream fishing, expanders, you know, bream love expanders. You know, sometimes the bigger expander, the better. It just depends on the sort of venue you're fishing, really. I go to certain venues and you, you fish the bigger expander, you catch a lot quicker. You know, and some of the skimmers are only this big, but they just have a big expander so much quicker. If you put a four mil on, you get an odd one. You put a big six mil on or an eight mil and you catch the same fish, but twice as quick. There we go. So we'll drop back bite that one. So I've had two casts. Left left there for a few minutes. Thought I'd we'll try and make a little bit of noise. It's only a little fish though. And that just shows you when the weather warms up, even with an eight mil expander like that, you know, it's not all about catching big carp. I can catch F1s on it. Look at that, little F1 on an eight mil expander. Amazing. I think we all know how important it is nowadays to have a change of hook bait. And to me, that's color, whether you're fishing with a feeder or whether you're fishing with a pole. And as you can see from that, that's some of the new 8 mil Pro Expanders that I've actually colored. And I'm gonna run you through how easy it is to get them like that. And the first thing you need is this great product. It's called Lava Rocks. It's been out for some time. If you want to color pellets, if you want to color meat, or if you want to color your ground bait, this is the stuff for it. And it's really, really easy to use. So all I've got, I've got my eight mil pro expanders there. I've got my little tub. That tub is probably about the size of a Coke can. So if you want to get some tubs like that for doing your different colors of baits, that's the sort of size that you're going to want. And all I do, I'll stick my pellets, my pro expanders in there, depending on how many you want. But the most important thing with any of them pro expanders is give yourself a bit of room you want plenty of water over the top. So I don't go over halfway with that container because I want plenty of water. Now in there, I've got a, a, a large cad pot there just to give you a rough guide of how much lava rocks you need. And all I'm gonna do is put about half or just over half. You can vary that for how many pellets you want. So just sprinkle that out in, the, in there. So that's just over half like that. And the first one I do is tip that straight on top of your pro expanders like that and then add some water. Like I said, make sure the water is cold because it definitely makes a better expander. And you just fill that, fill that right up to the top. You can tell straight away that's colored the water. Put the lid on, get an airtight lid like that. And all I do is give that a good shake. Now, like I can say, you can do this two hours, three hours before, you know, if you if you want to do it in the morning before your session, you're going to need two hours before you before these pellets are right. But what I like to do is do this on a, if I'm going Saturday, on a Friday night, I go out of my garage, literally five minutes, I can have one or two containers like that if you want a couple of different colours. My favourite colours are red and this orange. There's, a, there's other sort of colours in the range. And it's as simple as that. You can see those pellets gone down. And in the morning, you know, overnight or in the morning when you do them, that's taking all that colour in, and that's the, fin the finished pellet there. Absolutely deadly. Well, I've looked a real nice fish here. This was on a one of those big eight mil red expanders. Just thought I'd try one on in first cast. I've looked at carp, probably seven pound. Real aggressive bite. Oh, beautiful carp. Ah. Oh. 
just shows you changing colours. Oh, careful. Try and hold him up if I can. He's not very happy, mind. Just get that out of the way. Lovely, probably seven pine Woodlands View Mirror Carp on a big red mill expander on the bomb. Let's get him back and get another one. Well, I fished that straight lead for about an hour, caught some nice carp, plenty of F1s. And I've seen a couple of little bubbles come up on the pole. Went in on a six mil expander, caught some F1s, caught a couple of little carp. I've put an eight mil on, still feeding the sixes, and the difference in bites is unbelievable. I can, the only way I can sort of exp explain it is that if you were fishing meat short for carp, and that's where these big pellets come in, is when the fish come in, they're feeding, you want a big hook bait on, and they proper have it. But the art of it now is not to overcook it with your loose feed. I've got a pot on the end of my pot, I've got a cab pot on, but at the moment it feels like if you sit there for a while and you don't get a bite, you want to just throw a few pellets over top of your float, or just slightly shorter your float, and it sort of kicks them into taking your hook bait. But the, I've caught fish from like six ounces to six pounds, on an eight mil expander. You can't believe that even these little F1s suck a great big hook bait in. And that's what's so nice about having a big hook bait with you. You know, if you start getting bubbles, you're struggling to catch a fish or you want to be a bit more selective, they're the time now to start fishing with great big expanders. It's like, now I've sat there for that little, little bit of time. Just grab yourself a few sixes, only like half a dozen. And sometimes, literally, as that as them pellets go down, a bit of noise can get you that bite. It might be a bigger fish. Every time I've caught a bigger carp, it's sort of gone a little bit quiet. There we go. That's not a carp, that's a bigger F1 this time. But the bites are like lightning. They like sort of fishing with paste. And you'll find that with big hook baits. They proper have it. It always amazes me, even with a little F1 like that, will still take an 8mm pellet. So just grab one of those 8mm expanders, hook it down through the, the barrel end. Got a big hook, got a size 14 XSH on to 015 bottom and 017 main line. Because I am looking to catch a lot of fish and, you know, some big fish. A little bit of float showing. I've got a inline diamond on there, which has got a two mil bristle. You know, I can have a bit of float showing, and the bites are like lightning. Brilliant fishing, but I'm just trying to work. Look at that. That's a carp this time. So while I'm playing that, sometimes it's worth throwing a few pellets. Fishing doesn't get any easier than this. Big hook baits. Just drag them away from where you're feeding. Got 11 hollow on there, which I think is perfect for this time of year when you're catching F1s, carp. You don't know what you're going to look next, basically. I've got all my other sections there ready to go. This one's not happy. Just take your time. Just trying to keep them away from that line if I can. Doesn't feel that big. It's fighting real. Every, every fish today is give it a proper fight got me roller set up like that nice into that got everything set up got me landing net ready I thought it was bigger than that actually that's fought like a demon that fish small carp nice carp always fight the artists the commons everywhere I fish in the country they're always the same Beautiful Woodlands, Woodlands View carp. Get that bit of rubbish off of him, unhook him. 
Look at that. Eight mil expander. And treat it like you're a fishing meat. Anybody who does a lot of meat fishing, they know exactly what I mean by treating it like meat. A little bit of bait, big hook baits. Get that hook right inside. That's the nice thing about expanders, you can actually hide a big hook, no problem at all. And I don't mess about when I strike. When I'm fishing big baits like that, if, a, if the float goes under real quick, I give it a proper whack, and I would do on meat exactly the same. So I obviously fed a few pellets when I hook that carp. I don't want to keep feeding, because it's this time of year now when it's just everything's starting to warm up. If you're not careful, they'll come off the bottom a little bit and they can be an absolute nightmare. So we just go through there's a little liner then. But I'm waiting for those proper positive bites. Nice short line between me float and me elastic. You can probably see from the camera now. Oh, look at that. What a bite that was. It amazes me. Could have been a liner, but I doubt it. Big baits like that. And that's where these baits for me come into play this time of year when I'm going to carp lakes and even F1 lakes. It's always worth taking them big pellets with you. Because believe you me, you know, some days they, they're funny fish. They, don't, they only pick up certain baits. Just the weight of the pellet just takes me float. I'm fishing just, I'm literally plumbing up so me floats like that. So that's, I'm fishing probably like two inches over depth. Just enough to relax that bait on the bottom. It's nice still at the moment. It was a bit windy earlier, but the wind source, a little liner then. See, that's not sure if it was a little fish or a liner. But I don't mess about. I always try. I'm only fishing short, so it's nice and quick to come back in and put another bait on. And see how quick and easy it is. And like I said, don't feed too much bait. It's about hooking them in the mouth. What I don't want to do is end up foul looking them. Probably a few little F1s. I've had a look at that. So if you want to this time, feed a few more pellets. Big F1, I think, this one. You see the bites, fantastic bites. And I wasn't getting that with a six mil. As soon as I put an eight mil on, it's got different. That one's tangled around his dorsal fin, it's not, not anymore. Nice, uh, nice F1. So every fin eats those big expanders. And you can have a, you know, late in the match, or if you're a pleasure angler, late in your session, when the big fish start feeding, believe you me, you can put a huge, huge amount of fish together in a very short time. And literally, I fed like five pellets when I hooked that. You don't need to fill it in. There's a time and a place to fill it in, and it's not now. Got a 4B14 inline diamond on. I've got a size 12 XSH hook. Because I am catching, you know, I'm fishing with big baits. Simple shotting pattern, little bolt, two droppers. I've got some stots on there. 017 main line and 015 power line bottom. So not I've got my pot on, but I'm not using it. I think that make that little bit of noise. If I was getting lots and lots of liners, I couldn't really keep the fish down. I'd literally pot in with a little cad pot on to make no noise at all just to try and keep everything down, but it ain't like that today. I'm actually still catching, it's nice to throw because it's efficient. I'm catching lots of fish. I don't have to waste time putting any bait in my pot. But if you're having the wrong effect by chucking bait in, then it might be worth just cab potting, especially if you're fishing longer as well. Look at that. I mean, they're only little F words, but the bites, they're like paste, that's, that's how I sort of explain to people. It is like fishing with paste. Look at the size of that on an eight mil expander. It's amazing. Probably about 10 ounces. <laughs> probably just about, his mouth is probably big enough just to suck the pellet in.
Really, really easy to put on. Easy to ship out, as long as you don't get a hook in your finger like I just did then. You can just sometimes just flick your bait just past your pole tip and let it come in. I'm just going to throw a few pellets in this time. Just try and a little bit short of your float as well, because that helps stop foul hooking fish, I think, because your bait's past your pole tip a little bit all on its own. There's a few little fish there at the moment. It's lovely with a big hook. So easy to get that big pellet on. You could, you know, if the rule's allowed, you could probably fish a size 10 easily with that 8mm expander. Oh, he's getting a good scrap, that one. Oh, it's a tench. Even tench like 8 mil expander. Look at that. Brilliant. It's got better and better on this pole. The longer the session's gone, the fish have got bigger, less F1s and more and more carp. But it's so apparent, if I sit there for a couple of minutes without a bite, I just throw a few pellets over me float and whack like that. It's just that bit of noise, if there's one in your peg, sometimes a little bit of noise, they sort of grab at your hook bait. It's ever so strong. I've done it a lot with, you know, with F1s and carp, even in deep water. This feels like a good carp. It's been absolutely fantastic. I've got a big red 8mm expander on. Some of them have actually gone to the other side of the lake, some of the carp we've hooked. And then some of them are nodded around like this. You've got to go careful with them as they come up in the, come off the bottom. This one feels like it's sort of around its dorsal at the moment. Nice common carp. It's been great fishing today at Woodlands View. Take me time. Got the proper gear on. See if I can get him in the net before he... Yes. What a beautiful carp to finish the session off. And that's the nice thing about them big expanders is you can fish proper hooks, proper lines. You know, catch lots of fish. See if I can hold this one up. And I hope you've picked up some nice tips on how to prepare the Pro Expanders, but most importantly, how to fish with them. And what a great fish to finish the day off. Nice Woodlands View Common Carp. I hope you enjoyed the film, and thanks for watching.